Hey guys, Thomas the Silver Genie here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Elemental. If you end up enjoying this full movie review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. Second and third to my Peachon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly. And fourth to my Discord server, where you can join, collab, and do all that cool stuff. And Schilling will be reminded at the end of the review. With all that out of the way, let's get into Elemental. So, as going into it, I've uh, seen the trailers for this movie. Actually, I saw, like, pre-trailer uh, stuff coming out for this movie on Twitter, and when I first initially saw this, I will admit I was one of those people that were saying, man, this visually does not look very good. Uh, and when I saw the trailer, I continued to say, man, this just doesn't look good, visually speaking. Just something about it that looks very visually off about all the character designs. Um, and even as the movie, as I was watching it, I continued to say, on release, on watching it, I went, man, there's still something about these designs and its finalization that just looks off. Now, granted, I am here to review this movie objectively, but I just wanted to, you know, this whole subjective thing, this feeling that I had ever since seeing this movie about its visual design. Now, when I talk about objectivity, I'm talking about more so akin to the writing and the story and the plotting of Elemental. So, if the visual story is, you know, not doing it for you either, then I can completely understand the, you know, the sentiment in that regard. But I, again, I am here to review this movie on the basis more so on its story and plot. So, yeah, even the trailer was giving off very much a, uh, it was oriented a lot based off of the various elemental-based puns that you can conceive of. And, yeah, they are all in the movie. They're there, and they're all sort of packaged in these three sections of the movie. So I'll just go over those when they pop up. With that out of the way, let's get into the actual story and plot as it progresses. So we begin the movie with seeing two flame individuals, a, uh, a pa two parents, uh, uh, and they're heading over to Elemental City, as it's referred to. Uh, they are uh, from Fire Island, which is like the equivalent of like... They're moving into the USA from blank country or blank, you know, other outside state. So, yes, it is going to be taught. This movie is going to be uh, slightly about, uh, uh, you know, coming into America, quote unquote, or, you know, in this case, Elemental City. Uh, and in fact, one of the very first things that happens is that you and I'm a little bit surprised they did this, is that they actually do speak a sort of native language. I'm not sure what language this is, um, based off of what I was hearing. Uh, but when they go to the, the, uh, the plane, like, port, and they're told to give their names, they give their given names, and the very first thing that happens to them is the guy's like there, he's like, what the heck was that? And he completely renames them. And he's like, oh, wow, one of the first ta things that happens in this movie is just cultural appropriation. Jesus Christ. That was quick. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this movie's, uh, you know, it has some stuff where you actually think about it beyond just like, Oh, they actually just did that. Okay. So, yeah. That happens pretty bruntly. So, they are named or renamed Bernie and Cinder. And so, they get on the train. Uh, and as they are on the train, they're, like, sort of scooped up together. Uh, and the wife gets, like, water spilled on her from this water elemental. So she needs to be fed, like, these, 
like fire charcoal ember thingies that they have on them. Uh, and as soon as they get off the train to uh, ho you know find a place to stay, uh, none of the uh, residents allow them entrance. But they sort of pick out their own place in the meanwhile. And so they have their daughter named Ember. Uh, very flame, her name is obviously a very pun based name in itself, or very akin to the element, as it were. Uh, so we do see that, uh, I guess I'll just call him by the name that he's given, the cultural appropriated name Bernie. Uh, the father, uh, he lights up like a blue flame, so they are able to bright up that to that level of flame. That's like super hot. Uh, and we get a little nice short montage of seeing the little activities the daughter and him are doing together, and this is all in preparation for her to start running the shop. She's even she's like doing the stuff with him in the shop that they own together and it's like this fire based shop they have built and uh, they sell fire based goods that they sell um, so during this little montage these two water elementals that aren't our uh, the guy on the poster uh, are like sneaking in and they're they're like laughing and they're like and the, the father's looking at them like oh this is sus and they're like wetting all the stuff on the store so they're causing a ruckus so the father kicks them out and he's like well now he hates all water people uh you know racism or elementism -ism, I, I i don't know um I mean, so, yeah, that is sometimes all it takes to be a racist. Surpri I know, this is going to shock people, but it's easy to be a racist when you don't know much about outside of what where you've been from. And you have that one bad experience and then you just manage to expel that outwards. That's how racism is... It's like the easy racism like depiction, as it were. That's like the easy way to do it. So you go about the easy way of like, ah, oh, I see. So yeah, the father's going to be racist towards the water group in particular. So that's going to cause issues because she falls, the daughter falls for the water guy. Uh, who we'll meet a little bit later on. Uh, anyway. So she gets... Uh, as we cut to her more in a, a more current timeline, she's then officially tasked to handle with her first customer, and uh, she's not doing so. Yes, I'm going to use puns. Hot during uh, the experience, as the uh, other ele fire elementals like asking for like a free item, like a, this free candle stick or. A, fire stick or whatever kind of fire stick it is uh and the the model that she keeps trying to put on him is buy one get one free and he keeps wanting he keeps suggesting like well can i just get the free one then and she keeps replying that's not how this works you need to buy one to get one free and so she blows a gasket and so this is, uh, getting pretty, uh, bad on her end. She has a bit of a mo emotional flame-based related, uh, you know, shtick going on. And I suppose out of, the, out of, out of all the elements to do this with that makes the most sense is to pick fire. It's like fire would get angry, like it heats up and, like rages outward and onward and spreads even so yeah they very do stick to these very uh relatable to element sort of things that you can go like oh that would make sense for that thing to do that thing however we see as those years have passed by the dad has clearly gotten older and through that he's also getting a bit sicker and his, her mom 
is a matchmaker uh, to sort of prolong this uh, romance, because this movie is that. It does follow that plot. Uh, it just takes a bit to get there. Uh, so uh, her mom is doing the whole reading for this other couple, and Amber barges in, and the mom's like, oh, she still doesn't have that scent of love, as she puts it, or something along those lines. Uh, and then we see, as she leaves that place, uh, the thing, f one of the many bits from the trailer that has been replayed a lot, uh, the small rock kid you can see to the right of her, named Claude, which is very rock-based in naming, uh, who's like, has like this young crush on a older woman. Now, I can say this, uh, <laughs> This is very akin to, uh, of a system growing up. I, I could definitely see this, uh, because this is very relatable. I mean, I'm not someone who did it, but I've seen other young lads, as it were, uh, fallen for older women back in the day when I was growing up. And boy, was that actually looked up upon. But the moment you flipped it back in the day, I was like, oh, but if a young girl falls for an older man, uh-oh, then, every, then everyone's going to, especially the father, it's going to be like, oh, child, what you doing, you know? That used to be very akin to what it used to be like growing up. So I, that, that actually did made me feel a bit nostalgic for whatever reason. I was like, huh. It actually did remind me of what it used to be like when, like, it used to be this weird conundrum of, like, it would, and it would always go that one way. It's always, like, the boys get the respect, but the girls, they, they, they get the shun. They always, they always would get the shun. That's how it used to be. And now there, and then as the timeline has progressed, there's always a new thing to shun. I've talked about this outside of my channel before, of how we've kicked down the can of the thing to be mad at, and boy oh boy, with it being Pride Month, the, that is, uh, you know, still a thing that is happening. Um, so yeah. You can guess who the target of, uh, ire is, as we are in the midst of Pride. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, so that he does his little bit of, of like crush standing her, and she's like, nope. Uh, and then she proceeds to try to beat her dad's record of like passing things along, cause they also do like I guess like uh, like a delivery system of sorts. But we do see more of the dad still being super sick. So that's still like, uh oh. Uh, so anyways, uh, as she returns, she makes her way down and like to the basement and through a series of events of getting angry because she's like she's now been tasked to like lead the shop so like all the customers and it's like during a sale event so like all the fire based customers are like riling in on this day so she's like raging out as she's now known to do so she like finds a place in solitude like in the basement uh, she ends up in like this uh, leaky pipe system and she's like screaming out and the water breaks off from her uh, and surprise surprise we meet our water guy named Wade who is uh, this sort of uh, like report guy I guess I'll call it Um, so, he's, like, looking at her 
oh, an inspector is what I should have said. He's like an inspector of like buildings or whatever. So she's like, what the heck? And he starts just suddenly and abruptly inspecting her building and uh, is like, uh oh, there's like a lot actually wrong with this place. So he goes to report it, thinking nothing more of it, and she's not having any of it, so she gives chase, following him all the way through the chain, and all the way through, like, to, like, the office where he works. Uh, but, uh, as soon as he be she begins to explain further, uh, even though she had time to explain this earlier, but she's explaining it now, so a little bit of a her on that one. Uh, she's explaining uh, why this business is so important, and this is where we get our first s spot of like what water care or like the Wade family, I guess, is more so akin to being like versus uh, the fire group. Uh, the water group at least from the Wade family we can see, because they're the ones we focus on the most, is that they are very highly emotional and they cry a lot. That is just something they do a lot. And very publicly, so... Now, like... Excuse me. So yeah, that does come across as a little bit annoying. And I wish it would have been reserved a little bit more, because boy, do they, like, really... Like, it's a part of a plot that they are this emotional. Like, that is how ingrained the movie this gets. And I'll talk about that more, so yeah. Anyways, so he resent it. So they're trying... Or she's still trying to stop the appeal or whatever it would be called so she goes to the higher up who would get receive this to like stop it which is like this air cloud woman who's like watching the show that's currently happening with all these wind elementals so now we're saying what the wind elementals are like they're all doing the wind sports i guess that is their whole their whole shtick um at least from what I can tell from the movie. Um, and this is where we get our first packet of real puns. Uh, in terms of... Uh, she's trying to convince this other cloud woman to, like, uh, you know, repeal. Uh, they're facing off of against each other. She's not understanding why this woman likes the sports and... The sportswoman doesn't understand why this flame girl really likes her shop, so they're like arguing with each other and they bring up the puns as like sort of like almost name calling at this point. Um, and meanwhile, Wade is and the game's still like progressing, so Wade is noticing this one wind guy is like struggling to like play properly. So, like, he motivates him, and he, like, starts the water wave, a letter one. Um, and this, uh, up prompts him to get the score, and apparently we cut to, like, them winning, because they were, like, so far behind. It's like, uh, I don't think the numbers you were showing, I don't, I don't know if they would have been able to have time. But then again, I also don't understand the game they're playing, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know that sport, so I don't know how it works. So after that, they 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 converse, and there she's a little the wind lady. I don't even know her name, so I'll just call. I'll keep, just keep calling her wind lady. <laughs> uh, is like cooled down a bit. Uh, and she is the first to infer these two since they're already together in proximity, she's the first immediate person to call them a cute couple. Uh, so, like, oh, like, that just happens, and, like, they're, at least, I think they were both, like, offset by it, if I remember this correctly. So, like, she goes away, 
and he's like following her and so they're like going to the roof and like she's I forget why they're traveling but they end up going towards the roof and they end up and she ends up making like a flame blimp and this is where in the trailer you've seen it like a dozen times if you've seen the trailer you've seen the prune couple doing their weird shtick outside or inside but with the window open um and then we get our little, like, tender, our, our first glimpse of, like, tenderness as he starts to, like, you know, explain his whole ordeal and how he lost his, or, uh, his dad has passed because Disney picks her, I guess, I don't know. She, uh, well, I mean, at least she has both her parents, which, you know, for Disney, that's like, wow. But, uh, you know. Anyways, he goes on about how he's moved on from job to job, not really f knowing what his purpose, his true purpose is meant to be. And, uh, as they're continuing to talk, he also offers up the explanation of her temper, that being, uh, that is what happens when you're trying to tell yourself, yourself something that you're not yet ready to hear. Uh, and that will come into effect later on in the plot. So that's sort of the overarching theme or like character arc for her is that she's not ready to uh, face something yet. Uh, so they're what they're like working their way towards like where the water is coming from because that's still like a problem. Like the water leaks are happening, and this is like what has led them there. If I remember this correctly, I didn't put it in my notes, but I'm trying to remember it too uh so they're like heading over there they and like the water like leaks up to like almost like a flood level and so he's like about to get pulled away again because that's what initially brought him to her uh but this time around she helps him get back up and they plug the dam by using these little like bags of cement or whatever it's in whatever is in the bags and so after they help each other he's like you know what whatever he asks her out so yeah they she says yes uh or you know well she doesn't say yes but she ends up going on the date i should say rather so they go to a pun based movie and they are like watching it together and like they're like in the front row when you see them uh and you see all the people around them like oh what's what's that heat person doing like oh you know very you know ooh. so yeah there's a little bit of that still going on uh but then they take some pictures together but since she's exposing so much light naturally and he's like water like all their pictures come out messed up and from there, we get a little bit of a montage. Uh, and as they as they progress through the city, she like she has like her hood on because she has like a hood uh, uh, part for her clothes. So she puts she, she takes off the hood, and you know she relaxes and like all the some of the other elements are like yeah you're pretty cool or the younger version surprise surprise when the younger generation is like yeah the new thing's cool and the older generation's like all these darn new things it's like history it never have, finds ceases to repeat itself no matter what we do it's amazing so they dance separately for now uh you know, because they're still on their little date. They're still having fun. Uh, and during the, or after it, uh, they're, like, walking through this park or whatever it is. And, like, she spots a few crystals and she, like, runs towards it. She's like, watch this. And you see her, while she touches these crystals, like, her flame is able to change colors. Uh, and he's very impressed by this. He's very wowed. So he's like, oh, I can do something cool too. So he runs on the water and creates a rainbow over the water. However, that leak is starting to crack past that little barrier that they made. Uh, so their attempt was good, but not quite good enough.
<clears throat> so, with that being the case, they eventually head back, and they end up, like, in the basement of her place, and, uh, the store place, I should say, rather. So, they're there, and surprise, surprise, the dad, uh, catches them this time. So now he knows, like, something's going on. This water guy sus. Because he already has the, you know, the good old-fashioned racism on it. Or water, or, or elementalism, or whatever you would want to call it for this world. I don't know. Um, so, he, uh, in a panic, says he's an, instead of a regular building inspector, he says he's a food inspector. So, we saw this in the trailer as well. The dad makes him taste the food, the hot food, and he's, like, not handling it well at all. Uh, and then he makes a complete mockery by, like, he's offered, like, another thing of food, and then he adds his own water to it. Uh, that gets him banned from the store. And it's at this point she begins to doubt herself and thinks that she's a bad daughter. But she's still trying to do some stuff, like, in the store. She, like, makes this glass from the flames. Uh, and I forget how they figure out, like, it's cracked again, but they make their way back. Uh, and from making the glass, she, like, sparks up an idea, pun intended, as all of my puns on this review will be. Gosh darn it. Uh, I'll catch up to this movie's amount of puns, I think, if I keep this up. So, uh, yeah. He crystals, she crystals up the wall, uh, because of the leakage, the new leakage that has been come over. So now, they think, okay, now we got it covered. Second time's the charm. Uh, and during this little off-suit shoot... Duh, he offers her the flower back that she made, because I guess she gave it to him or something? That part was a little bit unclear, but yeah, anyway. Uh, as they're heading back, the mom, being the love guru or love expert or whatever she is exactly, she's like, oh, I smell love in the air, and she's, uh, she begins chasing Ember. So, they go to his place together. Uh... And they meet Wade's family. The And I already said about, you know, you have the Marco Polo thing you saw in the trailer. And the family, as I already mentioned, is very emotional. In fact, as I was just saying how it's part of the plot, here is where it comes into effect. They literally have a game where the point of it is to not cry. So to try to convince the others and try to push the time to, like, see how long it takes for them to cry. So obviously they go for a bit. We see like the water family, the parents go first and they they don't last too remarkably long at all. Surprise, surprise. And then it's Wade's turn and he already brought Ember with her so they're together in this game. So she's like, uh, yeah, good luck making me cry. You know, good all that. So he's doing his bit and he's going to himself all emotional through the stuff he's saying uh and yeah for you know what it's worth he tries going in really hard like mentioning like how like something about death or something or rather um but she's not phased whatsoever and then after two attempts of doing that and not and the time nearly being up uh he switches it up and focuses on her and uh Let's his emotions swell through to her, and it's through this, uh, she actually does tear up. She actually, like, starts to think about, like, oh, could we be something more? Uh, so yeah, she actually does shed a tear, which obviously evaporates. Uh, but it does count, since it did drop. Or it's, it's like a little lava drop, almost. So yeah, so the mom 
uh, already, like, being more, like, cool with this whole th shtick, because she didn't have any prejudice in moving in. So she's like, oh, uh, you know, I have this potential job. We saw you uh, fix the, the glass uh, during the table event. Uh, I know a person that you can intern with, and she's like all surprised at first, but then she thinks back, and uh, she doesn't want to make her father, or her parents, more so her father, disappointed, and so she goes back to thinking about the shop. And she she's abrasively aware, uh, and this is where the emotions of Pixar element uh, in Disney come right back. It's like they never. It's like they never lost their spark in terms of storytelling. Because this is definitely where it starts to be like, oh wow, they're actually really like going pretty deep here of like what it's, you know, what you need to sacrifice the fame family in coming here, and she feels as a you know, uh, a pre so appreciative of the the life that they've been given. That the in order to make any semblance of that sacrifice, make anything worthwhile, she needs to sacrifice a bit from herself. And it's like, yeah, that is like so drenched in like family, like generational issues of like, you know, the parents wanting the best for their kids, and then the kids like start to want other things, and it's like, but the but this particular family already has a job set out for them, but they don't like the job as much as we are starting to pick up now. So yeah, it's like, damn, Disney, you still got it! Pick, like, as much as I don't like this visual, the visuals on this movie, I'm like, okay, Disney Pixar, okay, I still see you got it. They can still know how to pull those strings. No surprise there. So anyways, they go to the, uh, the mom's, like, trying to get to them still, uh, but they sort of intersect at a point. So, like, she's, like, she's caught them now, and now she's sus, because she's, like, the father, obviously. Uh, so she's like, hmm, are you two really in love? I smell that stench. Let me test them. So she brings her them to the shop uh, where she tells Ember to light the can. This like these there are these two candles when we saw the previous can uh, couple they were lighting these two candles. So this was set up and now this is the payoff. So she does hers easy peasy, but then she looks at him. Uh, wait, good old Wade, and she's like, "Ah, oh, you see, you're not ready for this." And Wade, being quite, uh, I suppose, you know, inventive, I suppose is the best way of putting this, adjust himself because there's, it's pretty light outside currently. So he's like, ref using his watery body as a reflective, as the light is shining through, and like, creating like a beam of light. Uh, and he, like, aims it up by, like, moving his body around. And then it eventually hits the top of the candle and it actually does light on fire. So he actually did manage to find a way to make it catch on fire. And she's, like, actually surprised that he was able to manage all that. Uh. So, yeah. She's, like, looking at it. She's, like, oh, my goodness. This might actually be a thing thing. Like, this is actually... This might not... You know. But they're cut off as uh, the father uh, is, like, oh, I'm gonna retire in two days. Like, oh, you know, it's been a good run. You know, I have my daughters all grown up. I know, you know, he's already starting to, like, see, you know, pass a lot of the things over as we saw in the montage and her growing up. And, you know, he's, like building these blocks so there's like there was only this one left and yeah there was a, that one hurdle left so yeah however just as that's happening 
the glass that she had now set up, so this is the second time this is happening, the glass that she sets up begins to break. Uh, so she, uh, so he's like, they, he like takes her away. I forget like how this is set up, but like, he's like, hey, I know you wanted to see this like flower thing. Cause like during one of their talks earlier, I forget where this happens in the movie, probably like slightly during or after the montage. But like, she mentions how like she wanted to see this flower and it's apparently a flower that is not affected by any of the elements, for whatever reason. Uh, but, unfortunately, uh, she was not allowed access to it, as, uh, and this is like during her, when she was a child, and it had a sign there that clearly said, No flames allowed. So she was not allowed in. Hmm, well... Yep, that's that's the third hit of like, okay, the racism's right back, and you can guarantee you, you can just flip that to today's standards, you know, of like, what's the today's standards? Oh yes, gay pride, put, you know, today, of like, you know, get these gays out of my shop, the same, you know, th thread the needle, you can just, whoosh, amazing how... Again, no matter how crazy things get, time and these issues find a way of repeating themselves. It's actually quite amusing. And it's sad at the same time a little bit, I won't deny. So, uh, she, he has set this whole thing up with the wind lady uh, to like create this wind bubble around her. Because, like, apparently these, the, the the leaves are, like, the flowers are still there. They're just, like, buried under the water. So, like, she's, like, in this bubble of air. <laughs> so, like, a reverse bubble, I guess. And she's, like, in the middle of it, still able to, like, not be wet. Because, again, it's, like, a reverse bubble of, like, there's nothing. The water is, like, pushing out water outside and there's nothing in the water of the bubble except her weird how they did that but okay um and like yeah that was based off of a wind power so like elements are mixing in very unique ways at this point so wade is guiding her through uh and they see and she finally gets to see this flower and it does look uh oh, to her very pretty uh and then they see a bunch and then like she almost runs out because the bubble's getting smaller and so he like speeds her along uh, and at last they reach the surface and like he's like uh, you know and he finally is like okay we should see if we can do this like as a relationship thing uh, and he holds out his hand and she's like refusing to touch him she, you know because the, now they're really placing the element on top of like you know the whole race thing is like we're we just won't mix because of like whatever that would equate to in race but here we're seeing like no she's afraid she will literally burn him in the, the literal sense or she will get snuffed out by his water but despite that he still suggests that they do so like and to take it slow at first and he still holds out his hand so they do touch and it does seem as if they are able to do so without much getting in the way it seems like he bubbles up a little bit tor in like in his hand and like she like sets off some a little bit of steam but that's about the the full extent of like oh they're actually just able to do this like and have not obviously have too many issues so they begin holding hands and then they embrace and they even do a little dance together however uh, she doubles down on running the shop after this she's like oh man that sacrifice stuff it's really weighing on me still uh, you know she's still unable to break that 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 mental block in her head 
And this causes her to argue with him about how this is going to actually never work. Because she feels more prompted to do this. Uh, and again, this doubles up on what she wants to do versus what her what she assumes her parents want for her. Which is a very vicious thing. Because sometimes, yeah, you get kind of swept up on just trying to please your parents. Sometimes you just like... Mm, you know, just kind of keep going with it sometimes. So they head back to the shop. Uh, or at least she does. And she's like preparing for her like takeover of the shop. And he, like he has this whole thing. The dad has this whole thing set up. And all the other flame got people are out there. Uh, and she like he reveals this whole sign. We said they we see him set up prior prior to his two day retirement call out in the movie. Like he reveals this and now he's like revealing it to everyone else. Uh, but Wade crashes this party and like everyone's like what the heck is happening? Because no one has context except the mom at this point about like this whole crush thing that these two got going on. And as he's like saying how much of this won't work, like the against all the odds, he's like, "Well, we did touch, and that that worked. Like that one thing worked, and that alone, he was like, maybe there is still something. But uh, despite it, the water from the dam is still cracking, uh, and we see that the dad is not having any of this. So he's like, oh, you know." It, and as he's like trying to confess to her like uh he eventually goes i love you this is before the dad says i'm out of retirement and the daughter's like i don't love you she's like she's like hard in denial and i do wish they played a little bit more with her facial expression in this scene because it it she gives like a little hint of it but i wish they pushed it a little bit harder for like you can maybe clearly she see that she's lying instead of like, eh, I don't even know, you know. Um, anyway. So that's when he's like, the dad's like, oh, I'm out of retirement. And then the flood cracks down as if this flood is both symbolic and literal at the same time. Uh, as everything is combusted about this relationship, the cracks pierce down and yeah, uh, Ember sees, you know, she walked away from the scene, uh, but then sees the water is, like, heading in, so Ember heads back around. She does, like, a major loop back to the shop to, like, save the flame and help everyone get up from this, this water. Uh, so, uh, Wade makes his way back around eventually, and uh, he gets in the store with her. They end up in this one room where they're like, they hug again, and then uh, Amber's like, she finally breaks. She finally allows herself when they're in this isolated scene to like finally admit that what her fault was, and even more so, that she has her own dreams, her own aspirations, her own desire to not run this shop. Uh, she finally admits it all. Uh, and so, uh, they get stuck in there for a while, like a bit, like a few minutes. Um, and by the process of, like, I forget how this happens, but, like, by the time they, like, clear the door, they, uh, like, because they're, like, stuck in the room... Uh, that they're in. Um, they only see Ember. Like, she s appears to be alone, and everyone's like, what the heck? And she just assumes, like, he's, like, Wade's just gone. So, eventually, they're, like, talking about it, and, like, eventually, someone says something, and then you just begin hearing crying. So, again, it's part of the plot. It comes right back. And then they start to notice, like, oh, he's actually in the roof. Like, he's, like, above them, like, absorbed into the roof. Because water can be absorbed into stuff. 
Uh, so, yeah, they keep trying to make him cry. So, like, she goes back to, like, all the things that he said to her during, like, that cloud game. To, like, get him to continue to cry to, like, evaporate back down into this bucket so he can reabsorb back into himself. And when they're in, the, and in this public display, they kiss one another. Uh, <laughs> it literally doubles up on the kiss, like, oh, you know, like, and everyone's like, oh, <laughs> in the scene. So, a bunch of months pass by, an undetermined amount of months, who knows, right? Uh, but a, month, a few months pass by, uh, and we see that the shop is still bustling. Uh, it's not, I think the parents are st still running it, I guess, but I, they're going to pass it down to someone else, I assume. And we see the end bit of Claude... Because, you know, he was a bit of a character, you know, he, he was essentially a bit for a gag. So he sees this new flame girl, like, that's in his age range, I think, I assume, because they're, like, the same size. So, like, he's, like, playing, you know, this player. Goddamn. He, like, stems another flower from himself. He's like, yo, hey, girl, check this out. You know, however he says it. And he's like, and the girl's like giggling, so they're like, Haha, you know, young crush stuff. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we see uh, the two of them, Wade and Ember, like enter into the shop because she, she's like preparing to leave to go to that internship, I guess, or I think, I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, she's like heading out to do that. So the father's like, yeah, yeah, go, go. We'll, we'll see you off. So they go off to the airport or the port or wherever they are. Uh, and uh, they do this flame bow thing. But not before. Uh, I forget if this happens before or after. Uh, boy, Disney Pixar writing. Oh my gosh. I am, like, shocked that they put this in there. Uh, the dad... And this is in the movie, so I'm just relaying this to people who were watching this far into their view. The dad's like, yeah, since I'm in retirement, I'm gonna get busy with the hanky-panky. He... I throw up my hands and just say, that's what's in the movie, okay? I'm just reporting what's in the movie. And I'm like, Disney? The hanky-panky? You were about to... You about to roll up the hanky panky? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, Disney. That's a that's a thing you can say in a Disney uh, to move Pixar movie, I guess. That's a little bit outside the wheelhouse of Disney, typically, but here we are. Um. Yeah. So if you don't know. How do you not know if you're watching this review? Unless you're, like, super young. Anyway. So he says that, and then I either before or after, they, like, do the respective bow, like, they had from Flameland. And we saw it earlier with the, fa the father and his father not doing it. So they both do it, they do both do the respect bow. And then she leaves. And then that was Elemental. That's it. That was the movie. And you know what? It was fine. <laughs> like, despite it being something visually that I'm just like, eh. It was like, storytelling-wise, that was fine. Like, surprisingly. Again, even parts where, like, uh, like, it went a little deeper than I was expecting it to. But then again, this is Disney Pixar, so then again it's like, well, maybe not, necessarily. So it's like, dang. I almost wish that the designs were very different from what they are. And I'll be the first to admit this, since the review is done, I'll give my score. I think I'm gonna give this, you know, the puns are like a little, eh, you know, whatever. But uh, I wouldn't say they ruined the movie by any means. It's like it's just like a short pass of like 
condensed puns in one space. Other than that, I'm actually going to say this is a solid 7 out of 10. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, yeah, there's maybe, like, a one part or two parts. Maybe I might slide closer to a 6 out of 10, maybe, during the montage stuff. Maybe I could have worked out a little bit, been a bit more ironed out. But, like, other than that, I'm like, yeah, this movie is, like, surprisingly decent. Like, all... Despite all the the preemptive like all oh, this movie's bombing blah blah blah, it's like oh yeah well I don't know it's a pretty good movie shit. But yes, now that the score is out of the way, I will say there was a long part of me, and I never actually got around to it. I was actually gonna write at some point a literal elemental romance story. I'm not joking. I was on the cusp of thinking about it, but the visualization I had in my head was definitely not this. Um, and I don't know. I just like I'm like so ashamed that like I never got around to writing any of it, because I have all the character names for that mo like that that concept, and like. Surprisingly, throughout my all of my ideas of like initializing it, I never even inserted any single pun. Like I never felt the need to do that at all, or v at bare minimum, if I were to do it, like I was like barely thinking about doing it. And it's like yeah, they condensed the pun stuff. So it's like not that grating if you're you know not a fan of puns by whatever means. So there's that. But yeah, I guess I am sort of ashamed of my, more so of myself and like envious that like someone else got to do a elemental, you know, and the whole thing is like, yeah, my th whole thing was never meant to even be racial. It was like a whole nother thing. Um, but I guess no one, that, no one who would have cared long enough to like, I don't know. Ever, ever consider it a thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how this stuff works. Anyways, that's my review for Elemental. If you ended up enjoying it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. I want to head over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. Second and third to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel. And fourth to my Discord server, where you can join, collab, and chill and do all that cool stuff. And until next time, everyone, bye bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>